Okay, we're back with another episode of Tavern Tales. This time, I'm just going to give you five tips um, to basically add depth and complexity to your um, games. So, these are just five little things that you can do that basically will add some mm, zest and spice to your tabletop RPG games. And these can be used for both, you know, traditional fantasy-based D&D, um, Shadowrun, yeah, even Cthulhu Punk type stuff. So, that much ado, here we go. So, my first tip is uh, in constructing characters. Basically, instead of just rolling a character out and, you know, making kind of, uh, you know, just general type of thing, when you create a character, create an origin for said character. So, um, I'll give you an example of one of mine. Um, one of the characters I created early on was a character named the Noble Bastard Jaren. And Jaren is, um, well, his name kind of hints at his origin. He is the bastard son of a relatively well-known and well-thought-of um, royal uh, person of royalty. But unlike, um, you know, he, he's he's not claimed. Because of this, he is a very um, different type of character. Uh, money that he was supposed to use and sponsorship that he was supposed to use in order to gain um, access to what he was calling his uh, uh, to get to the Royal Acad Academy and learn how to use various types of um, yeah, swordsmanship. He failed um, because he was caught uh, sleeping with his sponsor's daughter and he, he basically lost his sponsorship, and instead he had to learn swordsmanship from an old drunk um, street um, an old drunk street uh, uh, duelist. Um, street dueling is very different from what you see um, when it comes to you know um, dueling. So a street duelist is very different from what you would get from that normally. Um, they fight dirty. None of this noble shit. They, 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 they fucking kill people. So, um, but eventually he goes and he went, um, won the royal tournament in the city that he was, that he, where the academy is, and the, the arena and all that type of stuff, and won the first, um, the first in, 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 in dueling. So because of this, he was he could have gotten a title, but he already he, he wanted no title from his uh, estranged father, um, from his estranged father's family. So instead, he basically um, became this badass. Um, he, he, he went for the magic sword. So he has a a decent a decently powerful sword of of keen, which basically gives him the ability to. Um, well, essentially be uh, a total and complete badass. So, essentially, he is a total and complete, you know, he has a, he, he wields three swords, um, a dueling EP, a, uh, the sword that he won, which is a, a long sword of keen, plus one, and a broad and a, and a long two-headed uh, long broadsword, and so basically this character, um, because of his character quirks and all that type of stuff, this origin basically establishes that he's arrogant. Um, he holds on to a grudge, but when it comes to his abilities, this dude is second to none. Um, now that origin lets me have uh, let, informs me as to how to play that character. You know, even though I created the character, you know, someone else could use that character and have a general idea of what his personality quirks are and that type of thing. So that origin has informed that character um, and gave him a deeper, more interesting experience. So without that, let's move on to the next uh, tip. So 
So here's a big one that a lot of people don't really think about um, typically, which is um, tip number two, give them property or title. What I mean by this is have your group, if you're doing a long campaign or just, you know, uh, a campaign that is going to take its multiple stages, have them clear out an old castle or an old fortress of, let's say, bandits or, you know, undead or something like that. And guess what? Now they fucking, um, you know, maybe the ghost of the old king now makes it so that they, they own that place. That would be really interesting. Um, so now they own a castle. Give them the ability to own this castle in multiple ways. You know, maybe you could have them be like, hey, um, we own this place, so now we have access to all types of cool stuff. Um, you know, maybe they can get a blacksmith who can friggin' give them the ability to do all types of cool stuff. What I'm saying is, that can really help make a game cool. Or you could have... You know, a local king just basically kind of be like, hey, um, now you guys, you know, you guys helped me, um, you know, deal with an issue with my kingdom. I don't have any heirs. You guys are now my heirs. So you're princes and, and princesses and all that type of fun stuff. And now you guys can friggin, you know, make all types of cool stuff happen. So what I'm saying is this is how you basically make a game work well. You know what I'm saying? You do stuff like that, that that makes a game work well. And I, and I think that that type of thing could really help make a game, you know, uh, add some depth and complexity. So, you know, not only are you this, that, or the other, you're also some guy basically trying to do whatever. And I think that would make a really good game. Um, and add some depth and complexity. Because at the end of the day, um, make a game making a game casual gets people into it. But after a while, even casuals are like, eh, is this it? So I think that for games of that nature, uh, adding, you know, the ability to, you know, you know, now you are this, that, or the other. You're you're a marquee. You're you're a prince. Um, you know, you now own this merchant company. You can send people out to do stuff. That adds depth and complexity to a title and makes it more fun. So with that being said, uh, let's move on to tip number two. Or er, sorry, tip number three. So one of my favorite. Um, things uh, to do when it comes to um, adding some depth and complexity to a game is adding uh, the use of rivals or nemesis or a nemesis or nemeses for the entire group. So one of the ways I've discovered the best ways to do this um, with the, the former rivals is let's say your group takes up a job from someone else and essentially they uh, they come out to the point where they're basically like, uh, you, you take the job, you steal the job from someone else who wanted to do that job. Or they tried and failed, came back all wounded, and they feel like you stole their glory. So now that group, every, you know, every two or three modular small size missions pops up to mess with you, right? They're your rivals, um, right? Or, you know, it could be a friendly rivalry, it could be kind of like a, a, a spiteful rivalry. Or one of my another way to uh, one of my other favorite things is to have a character that your 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 group early on maybe wiped out a group of bandits and the the, the head guy got away when he saw things were going south and let's say hypothetically your group snuck in through the back and accidentally killed the cook who was just sitting there you know cooking some stuff <laughs> you know in the kitchen well it turns out the cook that old lady was actually the bandit's mother. So now he's pissed. He's coming after your ass. <laughs> and so basically every once in a while he'll pop up more powerful with better people. He's like, you know, this this bastard killed my mother. He has to die. You know? <laughs> and so he has a valid reason to kinda wanna kill you. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and I mean that that makes that that adds depth and complexity to the game, which is what you want with 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 games once you get past a certain point. Because I mean, you can't just okay adventure, adventure, monster, monster, monster. You need to add some depth and complexity, and this is a good way to do it. Um, so I guess we'll move on to the next tip after the cut. So here's another one that kind of makes me happy, and that is the use of legacy characters. Now, you might ask, what the hell is a legacy character? A legacy character is where, essentially, characters who were a very big important part of past games are now, you know, still part of the game at this point. I mean, I like legacy characters. Um, and like I said, a great way to have a legacy character is essentially is to basically have them, let's say, hypothetically speaking, um, pop up in the game, you know, continue the story. So uh, this isn't a personal thing that happened with me. This is something that happened to a friend of mine. And what happened was is that um, he created this uh, warrior named named Tal Talbert, who was this barbarian, right? And like he, he, this character, like once everything was said and done, was really friggin' high level, really really strong, really really powerful, insanely over like like th this dude was maxed out. And the way he basically uh, retired this character was really cool. Um, Talvern was a man who basically was kind of like, like he, he was he was a barbarian, but he wasn't like a a he, he wasn't a Conan the Barbarian type of guy. He was just a dude who you know the way his the way his village did things was you, you would become a mercenary if you wanted to you know get out of get out of the shitty little village they lived in. So he becomes this mercenary. He starts making decent amounts of cash and decides to himself, hey, you know, I'm going to do what I need to do in order to, you know, um, bring some money back. But over time, he eventually comes to the conclusion, hey, I don't necessarily like um, where these things are going. So, I, you know, the world is bigger than I thought. I'm not going back. And so essentially this character um, re eventually reached, I think it was level like 67, 68, and he winds up getting married and to an orc female and uh, to a female orc and they open a tavern and you know has you had a couple of kids <laughs> and, a, and a dire wolf as a dog and you know became a became a, a, a innkeeper slash tavern owner a bar a barkeep and so you know the guy had a kind of happy ending for himself you know he had money he had a he had property, he had kids, he had a wife. I mean, things were going good for him. So basically, I had um, them pop up to go to that tavern, and eventually they discover that um, they're being extorted by a local um, uh, duke who's like really squeezing the little commons and kind of hard. And so you can basically, like, they basically. Uh, essentially got this legacy character who's really high level to go along with them and help them assassinate the duke <laughs> and pin it on another duke from a rival from a, from a, a rival duke who didn't like the duke who was extorting everybody in this little uh, in this well it wasn't a little town it was actually a small sized city and it was like a really nice little uh, kind of what's the word I'm looking for interlude that added some depth and complexity to the game and you know uh it connected it to past campaigns and characters that's a great way to add um depth and complexity to it and the final tip after the cut all right so here's my final tip and this is one that is going to maybe irk some people, but how I'm going to say it. The final tip is consequences for failure. Now, what I mean by this is, <clears throat> basically, there has to be consequences to fucking up. Alright, 
Um, for example, let's say uh, you have a quest that's on a that's on a countdown, where it's like, hey, these people have to do this, 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 and this, and if they don't, they'll die. You know, <laughs> if they don't, the bad guy will get this. That actually makes a game better. That adds depth and complexity to the title. <clears throat> and um, a good example of this is, let's say, you have a group of people saying, okay, like, you have to hold an enemy, um, you know, you have to be in a regular unit in an army, and you have to basically take an enemy down to this point. If you don't, they'll, they'll, they'll take control over this place, and that's the end. It, it's, it's over. That adds depth and complexity to a game. <clears throat> Which, in my opinion, makes the game better. Now, I could be wrong, um, <laughs> but, like, if they fail, the enemy now has a, a more advantageous uh, position later on. I think that makes a game deeper because it gives real, um, actual, real. Uh, stakes to what's going on, which I think makes a game better. I mean, I'm not saying always, but to me makes a game better. For example, um, the best way I can s describe this is <clears throat> um, I was playing uh, a campaign with a friend of mine, and we were doing dealing with a, an invasion of the undead, okay? And basically we had to hold this fortress. And so our mage um, fucked up. <laughs> did something that she shouldn't have done, and essentially it messed up the rest of the team. <laughs> so basically, like we had to escape, we lost the castle. So in the, it changed the scope of the entire campaign. We were in a more dangerous, precarious situation. Now we pulled it around, we got our shit together, and we won. But because of that, losing that, that stronghold, shit was tougher later on. And that, that added some flavor and context of the game. So basically what I'm saying is this. When you're playing uh, RPG, these types of things make the game uh, a tabletop RPG. These things make the games deeper. And you can apply this to uh, you know, sci-fi, um, techno, uh, steampunk, wood punk, uh, you know, <clears throat> tin punk, whatever you want. Clockwork punk, Whatever you want, it's the choice is yours, okay? And that that helps add depth and complexity to the game, which is what you want in games. You do not want games that are just very, very easy, no depth, no complexity. All right. So that being said, that's the end of this video. Um, enjoy the rest of the playing Splatoon. <clears throat> the next video will be coming out um, sometime in the near future. <laughs> Um, and upcoming events will be coming up after the time. Alright, <clears throat> so this is just upcoming events. So what's coming up in the near future is we're going to be doing um, a new program, which we tried to do last week, but I, uh, the panelist who I really wanted to be involved could not show up, so we're going to do it this week, and basically we're going to be doing um, a, the sci-fi, a new show called the Sci-Fi Power Hour-ish, um, where this week we'll be focusing on Star Trek. Next week, in honor of uh, the guy, the stuntman, who basically played Godzilla for Many, many years, many, 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 many years <clears throat> will be essentially like ice, cold to the touch, and it isn't very nice when you left. Doing a podcast about Godzilla, um, you know, because that's always cool. And then we'll be doing a podcast in the future about um, not Godzilla. And um, the one after that will be about something else, but look forward to that. Um, after that, we'll also be doing, uh, in, in the Sci-Fi Power Hour, will be this Saturday from uh, 7 to 8, but not really. It'll be it'll be 7 to 8-ish, nothing too fancy schmancy about it. Um, 
So, um, and after that, this Sunday, we'll be doing the BS Busters podcast as per usual. And this one is going to focus primarily on um, various uh, video game, uh, various businesses in the video game industry that are that we basically want to say f you to. And we'll be we'll be basically talking mad shit to those people, <clears throat> as per usual, because that is fun. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, we'll be talking about EA, Activision, Capcom, <laughs> Microsoft, and we'll be giving the reasons why we have various disdain. So these are these are companies that we have disdain towards, and we're just getting it off our chest. Um, the BS Busters after this one will be <clears throat> um, the opposite of that. Companies we want to say congratulations to um, and why we appreciate them. So we're getting the negative out the way first, Sunday, um, 7 to 8.30. And next week we'll be doing the positive side. So with that being said, that's the end of this video. Peace.